Hello and welcome back. I've just uh, clumsily topped up the uh, trap cleaning fluid there. I've uh, already put in a little bit from the top and uh, I've just got a, a bit on here. I've already been around the inside line and I'm just going around the outside line again. I do this sort of maybe once or twice a week if I'm using the railway a lot. Um, so it's a fairly effective way of cleaning it. A little bit of trap rubber from time to time here and there where it's needed. So let's um, let's uh, back up the, the diesel shunter and see if I can hold this wide enough and see if we can we can collect it. Sorry, just out of shot there. There we go, a nice smooth coupling. So track cleaning car was uh, R344. Originally I had uh, this one, I think I've probably seen this quite a bit on the old railway, and it's been knocking around the edges of this one. Not very comfortable on this railway, so I've got this uh, bright red one from the uh, Hornby Railways era. We'll, we'll have a look at the, the box for it in a moment. So let's see if we can uh, get this to run round. I think they're, they're a long running model between 61 and 76 from what I read. That little patch of lighter fluid should dry out without too much of a mark, I think. But I, I couldn't do that one handed properly, so uh, let's just follow that around. So I haven't done a great deal on the railway over the last week. Done a fair bit of wiring, modifying some of the wiring underneath and getting ready to put in some uh, signals. I've uh, renovated a good handful of signals in the gantry I was mentioning last week. So this is looking fairly good. As we come around here, we've got uh, the set of signals I've modified. So they're all so sort of basically from a bag of bits and I just recently got the gantry I think I mentioned so that they're all running on LEDs now if you have a look at the uh, insert pictures there you can see the sorts of things I've been doing but uh, we'll get those in to, to help me understand what's happening with the railway rather than anything sort of prototypical for, for railway control here we go we've got the, the diesel shunter coming back round again now one of the problems I've had with the track cleaning car on this uh, this track is the, the point blades are very sharp. Let's just slow that down and uh, let's send it around the opposite direction. There we go. So yeah, it can catch on the on the point blades. We'll have a look at the the material used. I've, since I've had this railway, I've been using slightly different material rather than the sort of more traditional looking feltish type of material. And this diesel shunt has been knocking around on the railway and the last one. Used it for track cleaning and testing for, for a long, long time. It's definitely been in the wars. It's battered and bruised and, and missing a, a fair few sets of steps. Let's see if we can just run it through this set of points and see how we do with it. So we'll uh, do number one and two B. So that should bring us onto the uh, inside track. So let's give that a go. And then we'll, we'll run back through. Let's just switch up those points. So. so I haven't shot anything really specific for this week. I shot quite a bit of footage just practicing with the camera in the last week. And I thought I might uh, use a bit of that. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, some some uh, footage I'm quite pleased with, some quite interesting shots. So we'll have a quick look at that. So let's just take that out of there, see how we've done with the uh, Track cleaning, ah, not too bad. So if you keep up with it, it um, it uh, it keeps the track quite clean. And again, if you keep the wheels clean, you keep everything clean to start with. Oops. So let's see if we can uh, grab hold of that one. So yeah, so you've pulled off a, a bit of dirt there, and you can see where it's uh, the material begins to catch catch on things. So. Uh, 
I've used this slightly more traditional looking pad here. These are these are ones from the uh, that auction site you can buy. Uh, quite a handful for a very small sum of money. They're quite good. They were really good on the Super 4. You can see they are quite hairy and they do wash quite well. You get a couple of washes out of them before they're uh, completely unusable. But uh, they, they tend to, I don't know whether you can hear that. There you go. They stick quite badly on these very, very sharp point blades on this System 6 track. And this yellow material, I can't remember the brand name for this. That's also quite hairy. Works quite well, but you've got to keep an eye on it, otherwise things tend to get stuck on the points and I, don't, I really don't want to damage the point work. You can see it is quite quite uh, fibrous, this fabric, but it, it is quite good. So this type of material, I think most of us probably recognise what that is available, both the yellow and this one available in most supermarkets, I imagine. So uh, this uh, early track car, it's not that early, I suppose, it's, it's got pinpoints. Um, I don't know whether they did have sleeve wheels, the first track cleaning cars. I suppose they may have done in 1961. Um, but if you listen to this on here, when I switch to the System 6, you really hear the, the flange depth is, is too great. So it's very uncomfortable on this track. It really doesn't like the point work and it tends to, to bounce and jump quite, quite badly. So uh, eventually I managed to, to dig out this one, which I did have but couldn't find. Uh, if I'd found it earlier, I'd have, I'd have had it on the rails a bit sooner, I think. But uh, this one, I just, just hear this one running on the rails. That's nice and smooth. And it sails through the points compared to this, uh, this dodgy old one. Let's just whip off the roof on this one as well. So I have put in a few weights, just car, car ba wheel balancing weights there, they, they tend to work quite well. So if we just have a look at the bottom of the two, very, very similar, you can see the, where the uh, track cleaning fluids begin to attack the plastic. So I, I believe originally it was uh, carbon tetrachloride. So uh, little capsules were available as a, as a separate, uh, separate item. Let me just have a look at uh, what that uh, what that is, it was uh, R528, little capsules of um, carbon tetrachloride. I think in an earlier video I've shown another one of the, a boxed one of these with, with some um, capsules that, that, that still exist. Uh, I'll find a link to that and we'll, we'll, you can have a look at that one. But that one's buried away in a box, but you can have a look at that fibrous, you can see that fibrous stuff there really builds up around the axles as well when, you, when you're using a slightly hairier material. So uh, yeah, these, these are plastic, plastic molded axles and wheels all in one. They're, they're quite rough. Let me hold that one up. Let's see a noisy motorcycle in the background. Sorry about that. You can see the, the, the axle's quite rough where it comes off the plastic mold. So it really does pick up the hairs. But uh, yeah, definitely a, an advantage having the, the, uh, the lower wheel, the uh, flange profile, you know, the, the smaller flange pro profile. I know a number of people have asked me what I'm going to do with the, the older the older items I've got. Well, I'm just not really going to run them. So it's a sort of we we know they're going to bounce over the point work. So we'll just wait until a later date when we get the uh, the older track. And again, I didn't didn't have a roof for that one, but the, I think the roofs are fairly similar. And my red one's got got a nice bright red roof. And I think this is the original pad from the red one. It was on it in the box. And I don't think uh, they ever listed this as a separate item. I'm not quite sure what you were supposed to do. So that's had some quite extensive uh, track cleaning, hasn't it? It's also quite short. You can't sort of advance it. I suppose you can turn it around. And it looks like it may wash. Um, so you may get a few uses out of it. But I suppose you could just improvise. So there's the box that the red one came in. A sort of mid 70s, early mid 70s uh, Hornby Railways box. And there is the uh, the number there, R three four four trap cleaning car. So it's always quite nice to have the boxes for these things. The cellophane's in in fairly poor shape. It's got a few little little holes in it. But uh, let's have a look. The uh, the seventy six catalogue. We won't go mad looking through catalogues. I know we looked fairly extensively through one last week. 
I believe the, uh, this is the last year they showed up in the catalog, uh, the, the 76. So uh, I think we have recently just look, looked through quite a bit of that one, so we won't, uh, won't dwell on it. Perhaps just have a look at this lovely picture here. Looks like we've got a hall and some Pullmans. I see the Pullmans in some of the footage I've shot, I think. So class 31 sitting in the, uh, the engine shed there. And the little crane. I still haven't acquired the, uh, the little crane in bright red. I've got one in the, uh, the earlier Triang Railway, sort of maroony colour. Um, I think we've seen that in the video too. So it does have a price list, this catalogue. So it's dated, what have we got here? 12th of January, 76. And um, track cleaning car, just for reference. So here it is, bogey wagons and vans. What have we got down here? R344, track cleaning car, one pound and 65 pence. So it doesn't, doesn't sound like very much, does it? By comparison, what was a, um, was a black five? There we go. R061, a black five was 13 pounds and 50 pence. So some perspective there. So in the 61 catalog, I think we've looked with this one before as well, but let's just have a look. I think it's quite interesting as the, uh, this is the year that uh, the track cleaning car showed up. Let's see if we can uh, find it. Lovely transcontinental wagons. And there we go. Here it is on uh, page 24, along with the, the ma operating mail sets, transcontinental and Royal Mail. And it says new, I think that's referring to this or possibly the bridge as well. Track cleaning problems solved. And there's, there's what you do, fill the tank in the track cleaning car with fluid provided. Couple of car up to your permanent way department locomotive and run it over your layout. This will result in a clean rail surface ensuring good electrical contact. And here we have track cleaning car R344. Underneath there we've got con uh, container of track cleaning fluid and that's uh, R528, oh, that was a number I was struggling to remember before. So I don't know whether that refers to a pack of six or just the individual capsule, I'm not, not quite sure. But uh, so the track cleaning car has been around a few times. Let's just uh, have a little look, so that's not too bad. So uh, yeah, just once or twice, maybe just run it round, nothing too serious. And uh, it definitely keeps on top of it rather than ignoring it. So most of the wheels on uh, my stuff I tend to clean before when I get it out of the box and put it put it back on the railway. So it is uh, it is quite good. It is a good way of keeping things clean. If you if you put the if you never clean the wheels on the rolling stock, it soon becomes quite dirty very very rapidly. But I think if we have a look at some of the footage I shot over the last week while I've been uh, practicing with the camera and and so on trying to get things to run the right direction and uh, adjusting the speed and so on. And then uh, I think uh, it's some quite nice footage. And here we've got the Nella Hall and the uh, great looking HST running the same direction around the railway there. Great low speed on the HST, Nella Hall charging away behind the station there with the, the Collet coaches. Lovely sound on the rails. We'll just watch that come around for a few moments. Great coming from that curve. She's turned into a really nice running model, this, uh, this Nella Hall. She's in quite poor condition when I did get hold of her. Listen to that clatter and the wheels on the track. You can just see the lamps on the front of the HST here. Now, I hadn't noticed when I was shooting this, there is a slight flicker on them. I don't know whether that's a, a reaction of the uh, the camera and the uh, the light bulbs. I wasn't aware of that when I was uh, shooting the footage. So again, some of this footage is, is shot purely handheld without the gimbal. And some of it is with the gimbal, so I can get in much tighter without the gimbal. The gimbal's quite a large item, prevents you from getting quite low down on the railway, so this is without the gimbal, so it enables me to get in quite low. But the footage is quite jumpy. And there we 
we've got a bit of a, a good service going on there. We've got the 264 charging away with that small rake of wagons we've seen recently. Great valve gear on, on that locomotive. I love it as they split apart coming down the layout like that and go either side of the station. Got lots of boxes there. So I've had uh, lots of them out so I can do some of the wiring underneath. You can see the hoover there as well. Not only hoovering under the railway, but hoovering on top as well. If you hoover around the tracks, it definitely keeps the tracks, tracks cleaner and stops the wheels getting dirtier. As it all sort of picks up and makes that sort of uh, artificial tire around your, uh, around your wheels. It all contributes. Uh, the odd hoover around every now and then doesn't go amiss. Uh, that good service catching up with the Nella Hall running a little slow there. Look great, these uh, wide views on the railway. Don't get don't get these often enough. I have to set up some handheld handheld controllers, sorry, so I can uh, work from the other side of the layout. I think. There's that lovely split as the two locomotives separate again around the station. HST sitting nicely there. Again, the box is in the way, a bit of uh, discarded wire sitting there on the layout board. Yeah, definitely turned into a good buy, this uh, model of the Nella Hall. A little bit of magnesium, not quite as strong as you might think with the... Uh, it's, uh, I think they've got plated wheels. I don't think they're nickel tyres. I think they're plated with something. Storming into that curve behind the signal box. Now we're going to do a bit of work with the points here. So we'll, we'll back her into the station. Change the direction. put her gently in one of those uh, very long sidings. So this set of points just the other side of the bridge, I always have trouble seeing which direction that's set when I'm uh, at the controllers. And I found keeping an eye on the train rather than looking through the camera often helps with the control. But definitely talking and filming and looking what the train's doing it definitely leaves you short of control. It's much easier when you're not trying to think what to say at the same time. They all have slightly different sounds. And you can start off really slow, but the controllers are a little bit crude in power delivery. And there's like a millimeter extra on the control knob and it jumps into life a bit more. There, you see it's just a, a fraction on there and you get such a difference. But they are ancient controllers. And it could just be the motor overcoming the friction of the mechanism, of course. So I'm not going to put those on the turntable, I just sort of thought I'd put those out of the way. And we'll get this uh, lovely GWR tank with these clear story coaches. The wheel, wheel flanges on these are, are too big. They don't like the point works, you'll see them sort of rattle around. But I think we're going to get away with it. Yeah, I think they made a lot of this model. I think this is a matte one, it was sort of a mid late 70s one. So they were in glossy as well, with a smoke unit as well, I think. The early one had a smoke unit. You see those wobbling away on the, uh, crashing over the, the sleepers. And then we'll go through the crossover, which I don't use as much as I should from the inside onto the station approach. I always forget about this route through, but you can run back round onto the main line this way as well, which is quite nice, but in this instance, I'm just gonna back this group of coaches in, into the uh, into the station. There 
we go, past the signal box. And we'll stop just before we get to those uh, buffers. We don't want a derailment. And we'll bring that smoothly out through the points. We'll bring her far enough forward and we'll, we'll back her in where the uh, little tank locomotive with the uh, clear story coaches came from. Nice take up on the coach, uh, the wagons as they all come together there. They all close up on their couplings. Past the fuel tanks and through points number six there. And we'll just leave those in there for now, I think. the lights and then we'll run right around the layout we'll we'll pick the coaches up from the other end the lovely noise of the ribbed wheels on the on the steel track here and I think these were made late enough to benefit from relatively fine flanges so they don't do too badly with the point work these are sort of very late 60s early 70s these Bobo electrics Collect those coaches. The camera jumping between focal lengths automatically, sadly, there. Heavy load this. All of those coaches have got lamps on, so the pickups are, are quite, uh, quite extra. Create quite a lot of extra friction, is what I'm trying to say. Again, I didn't notice those uh, lamps flickering quite like that, but then they do flicker these coaches quite a bit. the curved point. A test with the diamond crossing there. Not even a stutter through the diamond crossing. Slowing down a little there. Part of that's me. Part of that's the weight of the coaches, I think. And a nice gentle stop. Must dig out the later bridge. I have got the later variant. Lights off. And HST storming through there. And I've got a set so she runs round through the station. And straight out the other side. Pullman looking great there. Lovely clatter of wheels. I know we've got the Britannia with the Pullmans. Lovely model, this. Quite a number of variations over the years. Early one had solid wheels, and then they uh, had see-through wheels, smoke units, both types. The, uh, the earlier, the earlier Sooth, sort of smoking tube, and then the Synchro smoke. And this is the model was uh, we've just seen there was the uh, with a tender drive rather than locomotive drive. And coming around that very tight curve in the station. Lovely sort of overhead shot there. Back out onto the main line. So there, this footage was just a bit of practice, really. Just to check a few things out. Just to try the, uh, the speed of the locomotives and filming at the same time and trying to change the speed. Getting a bit closer like that. And then we'll jump the other side of the layout again. We'll get some slightly different views. I think that's almost it for this week. Thanks again for watching. And if you uh, look back again next time, we'll have something else from the, uh, the range to look at. But I'm going to leave you just with a, a few views here for the last minute or so of the, uh, of the layout. Thanks again. Goodbye. <laughs>